Good evening, my name is Mr. Sanders and welcome back to School Night. Let me tell you a little bit about advanced pre-calculus and how your student can find success in this class. First off, a little bit about me. My wife and our three children live locally. Uh, we have twins that are in second grade and our oldest is in fourth. I graduated from Cal Poly San Luis Obispo with an electrical engineering degree. Went back to school and got a master's at National University and have over the last couple years, I've taken some graduate work at USC as well. I've taught everything from Algebra 1 all the way through Calculus BC, along with a few engineering classes, and really enjoy this upper, upper level mathematics with advanced pre-calculus and calculus. It's nice to have a good perspective of both where they're coming from mathematically and where they're going into calculus and beyond. 2020 has been a heck of a year. Um, just finding balance has been a challenge for everybody, and it's one of the things we, we hope to enforce at Oak Ridge and hope to implement. Um, especially for our students. We're trying to offer students flexibility through a flipped classroom in this class. And we're going to try to avoid penalizing students for not understanding something the first time. And to do that, 20% of the grade is formative assessment and 80% of the grade is summative assessments. So with the flipped classroom, we're going to introduce concepts to students through video notes. And it's a little bit different. Some, some of the notes will be done in class, but there's a, a large amount that will be done through video notes at home. And they'll have a number of opportunities to practice these concepts. Their first one will be doing the homework with Math Excel. Let's take a look at what Math Excel looks like and what it offers in forms of instant feedback. This is a typical Math Excel problem where students would enter their answer to a problem. Once they've completed it, they'll check down here at the bottom and they'll say, they'll hit check answer and the software will tell them whether they got it correct or not. Right away, the students get feedback on whether they understand a concept. If they got it correct, they're welcome to move on to the next problem. If they got it incorrect, they actually have an opportunity to redo the same problem with different numbers. If they really don't know kind of where to start, they can go up here to the question help button. There's both a, an example and a guided example where they actually work through a, a similar problem and take them through step by step through the process. With the ability to redo each of these questions, there's no reason why a student doesn't get 100% or close to 100% on all the homework problems in Math Excel. So as far as the formative and summative assessments in this class, uh, the homework, as we said, and the, the formative assessments, that's going to be worth 20% of the grade. That's going to consist of the video notes, maybe a few worksheets here and there, and mostly Math Excel assignments. We also will give the students learning target quizzes as a third opportunity to practice that content. And, and make sure that they understand what they're doing. And that allows the student to identify any areas of weakness prior to taking the sum of assessments that are so valuable in their grade. Tests are worth 55% 55, 55 and the final exams worth 25%. Both of these are chapter based and they're based upon the homework and the learning target quizzes. We'll take a portion of these on Math Excel and then there'll be a secondary portion that is a free response where they have to upload their work live. Our expectation for students, be in class and on time. Um, most students are doing a great job of that. And completing the assignments on time. Math is predicated upon prior knowledge, so when a student misses um, an assignment early in the week, it's gonna hurt their understanding going forward for the next two, three, four, five assignments. It's not a typical classroom where a student can raise their hand and ask a question. Instead, they have to unmute their mic on a Zoom call. And that does take a little bit of courage, but that's something we're trying to train students to get accustomed to doing. All communication should be professional, whether it's sending, sending me an email or if it's writing a comment in the chat uh, when we're on a Zoom call, we're asking students to pretend that this is, a, this is a professional work environment. And it shouldn't be as casual or informal as sending a text message or a Snapchat to a friend. Uh, so we're trying to maintain that professional environment despite the distance learning challenges. As far as how you can support your student, you want to ensure that they're in class and you're monitoring the attendance. Obviously, if they're not there, it's difficult to get the finer nuances of the material. Also ensure that they're turning in assignments by checking areas. If they're not, uh, that's definitely a cause for concern. And likewise, I would question any low homework scores. With the ability to redo any of those assignments or any of the problems in Math Excel, uh, there's really no reason for students not to be getting 100% of each of those assignments. If you have any further questions or ever want to reach out, email is the best way to get a hold of me. My contact info is right there. I hope you have a fantastic night. And we're looking forward to a great school year. Thank you.